Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm doing my initial thoughts video on Emma by Kaoru Mori and translated by Sheldon Jerska, a CNN manga published in Japan in 2002 then translated and published by Wildstorm, an imprint of DC Comics in 2006. The copy I have here was published by CMX which is also an imprint of DC Comics. This volume is rated T plus for suggestive situations. According to their profile on Goodreads, Karu Mori, quote, is a mangaka best known for her series Emma and A Bride's Tale. Her stories tend to be intricately drawn female-led historical dramas set in exotic locations, like Britain and along the Silk Road. Mori has an expressed fondness for maids and learning about foreign cultures, end quote. What kinds of keywords apply? Victorian England, English maids, inst of love, the elephants, servants, and exotic. Flipping over our book, the summary is, quote, the saga begins. In Victorian England, a young girl named Emma is rescued from a life of destitution and raised to become a, a proper British maid when she meets William, the eldest son of a wealthy family. Their love seems destined, but in this world, even matters of the heart are ruled by class distinctions. End quote. A romance manga, I will be upfront and say it didn't really click with me. I'll be talking about what didn't work for me, but... This isn't to say, obviously, that it can't work for anyone. It's just easier to criticize things if you don't like them. That said, the art is extremely skilled. And at least according to the short piece at the end of this volume, Mori did a lot of research and worked with a historic expert, although one Goodreads review seemed to indicate that started maybe in volume three or four, to be sure that she was depicting Victorian England accurately. This section also indicated that this book is the birthing point of Japan's interest in Victorian maids in general. So that's certainly impressive. As I already said, the romance aspect so far really did not click with me at all. Over future volumes, perhaps that would change a bit, as I assume that the relationship between Emma and William gets fleshed out a bit. But here at the start, there's really no reason given, and suddenly there's three or four guys following instantly and madly in love with Emma all at once. Gender and sexuality are both super binary and hetero, which is not terribly surprising. Although, as I do like to point out, queer people have existed through all time and space. Class is, interestingly, something that this series seems to be pretty hyper aware of, but instead of running with that knowledge and facing it, this volume seems to want to create a story where all these differences magically disappear for this one person. Much like the insta-love, everyone who comes into Emma's circle seems to want to catapult her into the highest level of class comfort they can manage with no explanation. I kind of wonder how long William's father manages to dislike her. Needless to say, escapism can serve an important purpose in a person's life. Why else would I be reading through the Witcher series? But based on where I find myself right now, this escapism only serves to irk me. I might also still be impacted by the chip on my shoulder that I had to the original Upstairs Downstairs series that my grandfather loved. Ability and disability was integrated as much as what is generally seen as the average arc of age and ability being acknowledged. Not much, but this does provide the small amount of actual explanation of motivation that any of the characters at this point has, with her employer wanting to be sure that Emma is taken care of before she dies. Because that's how employers generally feel about their employees, no? No! Race did not sit super comfortably with me. With the major plot of the early part of this volume revolving around a visiting prince from India, taking a step back, the whole story is about exotic other whether it be Victorian England or this foreign prince, although what little characterization we get is heavily weighted to the white British population. So I'm certainly not saying they are the same thing. So yeah, trying to figure out how the art balances out my feelings for the story thus far. I guess I'm going with 2.5 stars for now. Whether I round that up or down on Goodreads, you'll just have to click over to find out. Bye y'all, keep reading and organized and capitalist oppression. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.